The next thing that I do when I work with a burette is to fill it. And so you never try to fill pouring above your head. So what I always do is I lower my burette as far as I can go. Then I remember I'm lucky and I have a funnel at my disposal, right? Why should I try to pour into that little tiny top space when I can? There we go. I can take this funnel right here and I can pour. And my goal is just to fill it. I don't actually really care how much I fill it with. I just want to not fill it over the top. So I'm going to pour some stuff in right now and you're not going to see exactly what's going on at the moment. But I do want you to know that what I'm filling it with is sodium hydroxide. And my sodium hydroxide supposedly came out of a carboy that says it's 0.122 molar. However, sodium hydroxide over time uh, actually degrades a bit. So you get some um, oxidation that happens and you get some reaction with water. And so it might not be 0.122 molar. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this bu uh, burette with sodium hydroxide and I'm going to standardize it to make sure that I know exactly what the concentration is. But if I want to get good results, the first thing that I need to do is rinse my burette a little bit. And so what I do is I just pour in a little bit into my burette. Not tons. This is less than five milliliters at this point. And part of what I'm doing with my burette is I'm just, oops, take the funnel out unless I want to make a big mess. I'm just going to pick it up and gently turn it around. I'm trying to coat the sides here so that the sides get a good rinsing with the sodium hydroxide because this burette was last used by the analytical students and they didn't actually use sodium hydroxide. So I need to make sure I clean it out from whatever they had. So I'm going to pour out the top and I'm going to do that one more time to get the sides. And I didn't use my funnel that time and now I've got soapy sodium hydroxide on my hands. So take that as a lesson to yourself. I'm going to Swish it around a little bit more and again pour out the top just to rinse really well. Now what I want to do is I want to clean out the stopcock of the burette and so remember that this little part right here there's liquid that'll flow through there and you want to make sure that whatever liquid that is is sodium hydroxide instead of the dregs of whatever was uh, coming from the last person who used it. So again just going to pour a little rinse portion in here. I'm going to be smart and use my funnel so I don't make mistakes. There we go. And I'm just going to drain now all of that through my stopcock. And one thing that I want you to know that's kind of fun about these burettes is that if there's not enough liquid in them, no liquid's going to flow because there's just not enough air pressure from the top to push it out. And so I've made sure that I've filled it far enough. And the first thing I would say before I'd go ask my TA or my professor, hey, why doesn't this work? Is I'd say, if I put enough stuff in here. And I'm going to down so you can see the stop clock a little bit better and let it go. Turns out that I've put enough in and here goes the flow of the liquid. I'm just going to let it flow all the way through so that I know that I'm getting enough uh, cleaning that goes through the tip of my uh, burette here. And so now I can feel pretty comfortable that that's what I've got. I'm going to close off the burette now and I'm going to fill it all the way up. And at this point, we've talked about cleaning a burette. What I want to do is I want you to go through the section in your module about reading a burette. So I'm going to show you pictures of what it looks like when a burette's full and how to read that because it's a little bit easier to do in pictures than it is in video. So go ahead, go through those little pictures in that section, and then we'll come back and I'll show you an actual titration.